to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John chapter 8, verse number 32. We welcome you today to our study of our authority in religion as it relates to the idea of evangelism and knowing God's word and, and becoming a child of Almighty God. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. If you don't have your Bible, we want you to pause for just a moment, locate your Bible and have it ready as we're going to look to the Word of God as our only authority in matters of religion. As always, we're so glad that you joined us for our broadcast today. We want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual congregations of the Church of Christ in your area and Christians around you. And, th and those Christians, members of the Lord's Church, would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday for Bible study. Check out the local Church of Christ in your area. You'll find people there who love God, who are deeply concerned about doing what the Bible says, and who are kind and loving and friendly people. In fact, if you've got a, a Bible question, you'd like to know more about God's plan of salvation or the church or, or any religious matter, members of the Lord's church would be happy to sit down and discuss the Word of God with you. Friend, we'd also like to help you here at the Gospel of Christ. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our previous lessons, you can go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, fill out a free media request form. We can give you a digital download nearly instantaneously, or if you'd like to have a DVD or CD of that, we can make that available to you as well. Also, we want you to check out our website. We've got a wide variety of topical. We've got studies of every book in the Old and New Testament, just a plethora of good Bible study material that we make available to you free of charge. Check it out, thegospelofchrist.com. Also, don't forget about the Gospel of Christ app available for both Android and Apple phones. You can download that from the respective Play stores. It's free, great way to keep up with what we're doing here at the Gospel of Christ. Today, we're thinking about, as it relates to the idea of evangelism, becoming a Christian, our authority in religion. Why do we do what we do? Why do we not do some of the things that sometimes people do? What is our authority? What do we use as our source for why we do what we do? And friend, we begin by thinking about our authority in religion today by realizing that it's God's truth. It is the truth that comes from God that is of supreme importance. It's the only thing that matters as it relates to salvation. We begin by noticing John chapter 8, verse number 32. As we think about our authority in religion, notice what Jesus says in John 8, verse 32. Jesus says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, my friend, what is it Jesus says will make you free? My opinion, your opinion, some other man or book or writing or, or the ideas of some council of religious men? No. Jesus says the truth will make you free. And so we see the importance of truth in being free from sin. Now, notice also the importance of truth as it relates to worshiping God. Notice this verse, John chapter 4, verse number 24. 
Jesus said, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Now, friend, Jesus tells us if we're going to pay honor to God, if we're going to worship God, we must worship God in spirit and in what? And in truth. And so truth is vitally important because it saves us. Truth is important because God demands that we worship him according to the truth. Well, naturally then, we would want to ask, what is truth? This truth that saves, this truth that we worship God by, what is truth? You know, that was a question Pilate had in John 18, verse 36. And Jesus answers that question for us in John 17, verse 17. Notice what the Lord said. In praying to the Father, Jesus said, Sanctify them by your truth. Listen now. Your word is truth. And so what is truth? Well, friend, God's word is truth. And thus, it is the word of God that we're set free by. It is the word of God that we worship him correctly by. And friend, when we talk about this, this truth, we need to realize that the, the teaching of Jesus, it's from God. It is truth. Look in John chapter 14, and I want you to notice what the scripture says in verse 23 and 24. Not only is the word of God, the word from his mouth, truth, but friend, please realize also the words of Jesus are also truth. Listen to John 14, verse 23 and 24. Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he'll keep my word. My father will love him. We'll come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. Now listen to what Jesus said. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. And so if we're talking about God's word being truth, friend, the teaching of Jesus was from God. It's also truth. And friend, that's how God speaks to man today. Hebrews 1, verses 1 and 2, notice this passage. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son. If God's word's truth, God communicates that truth to us today through his Son, Jesus Christ, in the New Testament. In fact, John 3, verse 35, Jesus says that God has given all things into the hands of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is that medium which God has communicated all authority and all truth through today. In fact, that's exactly what Jesus says in Matthew 28. Verse number 18, notice these words. Jesus says to his disciples right before he descends or ascends back to the Father, Jesus says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And then he tells them, You go and make disciples of all nations. Now, how much authority does Jesus have? Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. Well, friend, if the Bible says Jesus has all authority, how much does that leave for me or you or for people today or for someone who thinks he's a religious uh, elite? How much does that leave for other men today if Jesus has all authority? You can't have more than all, and Jesus has all authority. And not only does he have authority over all things, he has all authority. But friend, I want you to realize Jesus has authority over all people. Look in John chapter 17, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in John chapter 17. Look, if you would, in verse number two. The scripture records these words. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you 
have given him. Jesus has authority over all flesh. What's that mean? Everybody who has ever lived, is living, or will ever live of any race, nationality, gender, language, whatever it may be. Jesus has all authority over those people as well. Now, friend, realize with me also that Jesus has authority over his church. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, verse 22 and 23, that God put all things under Christ's feet, gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. God made Jesus to be head over, listen to this, all things to the church. If Jesus is the head of the church, and he's the head over all things to the church today, does that mean he has all authority over the church? Does that mean that it's his voice, his directives, and his ideas that we must follow today? Absolutely. And so in every area, the Lord has authority, not man. It's the Lord's will that we need to follow. And friend, realize this, please. When I stand before God, when I leave this life, and I stand before God, what's going to matter at the judgment is the words of Jesus. Notice these words with me. John chapter 12, verse number 48. Jesus said, He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. At the judgment, before the throne of God, whose words are going to matter? Jesus said, The words that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. John chapter 6, verse number 68, as Peter, uh, as Jesus makes some hard statements and he says to his disciples, do you want to go away also? Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Who has those words? Jesus does. And thus, if Jesus has the words of eternal life, if those words are contained, in the Bible, in the New Testament. Then, friend, I don't need to go to, to parents or preachers or friends or relatives or anybody else, any religious person, to learn what to do for eternal life. I simply need to listen to the words of Jesus Christ. But then another question arises. If Jesus has all this authority, how does that authority get from Jesus who lived in the first century 2,000 years ago to us today. Jesus is not here in the flesh right now. How do we get the authority of God's truth today? A friend, God inspired the Holy Spirit to guide the apostles into the first century, in the first century, to write down all truth that was necessary to save us. Let me show you from the Bible. Would you look in John chapter 14 with me? I want you to look in John 14, verse number 26. Look at what Jesus said would happen. To his first century disciples, Jesus said, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Jesus said to his first century apostles that the Holy Spirit was going to teach them all things and bring all things that Jesus said to the remembrance. Thus, when the apostles, when, when Peter or John or Paul or, or Luke or Mark or Matthew, whoever it may have been, when those apostles were taught by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, they weren't teaching their own words. They were teaching the words of Jesus. And so the, the authority of God starts with God. He sent that through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus issued the Holy Spirit to come to his apostles. And what those apostles spoke, that was the very word of God, the truth which saves. Now, how much truth 
Then did the apostle speak to us today. Listen to John 16. Turn in your Bible and notice John chapter 16. I want you to hear what the Bible says in verse 13. Jesus said, again, to his first century disciples, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. Whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. How much truth were the apostles guided into by the Holy Spirit? Jesus said the Holy Spirit would guide them into all truth. Friend, they wrote that truth down in the Bible. You can't have more than, than all truth. We have, in the words of the Bible today, all truth that is able to make man complete unto salvation. Now, that, that's what Jesus promised. That's what the Holy Spirit intended to do. Does the Bible affirm that that's exactly what happened? Look in your Bible in Jude verse 3, and I want you to see, toward the close of the New Testament, God affirms that was happening. Jude verse 3, notice what Jude said. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, listen now, which was once for all delivered to the saints. Friend, does the Bible say the faith was once for all delivered in the lifetime of the apostles? It absolutely does. If the apostles were guided into all truth, all religious truth in their lifetime, should we be expecting new revelations today, more truth, or some individual to tell us something other than the truth we find in the Bible? No, God promised they would get all truth toward the close of the New Testament. The Bible says that was happening, and thus we have that today. Well, another question then arises. If all authority begins with God, that came through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus issued that to the apostles through the Holy Spirit. How does that truth get into my life and yours today? Friend, we've got to realize the inspired Word of God, the New Testament, is our authority today. It's our only guide in all matters of religion. Think about what the Bible says in John 20, verse 30 and 31. Truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of His disciples, which are not written in this book. Listen to this now. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and that believing you may have life in His name. Does the Bible teach us that it has what we need to have faith in Jesus and to go to heaven? Friend, it absolutely does. I want you to think about some passages in the Bible that teach us we can have confidence in the Word of God as our only guide. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, John says, the, notice this passage, These things we write to you, who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. L listen to that powerful teaching there. Why did God write the Bible? These things are written that you may think, that you may have a best guess, probably. No, these things are written that you may know you have eternal life. Why did God give us the Bible? Can we have absolute confidence in the truth of God's Word today? Friend, that's the exact reason. We have the Bible so we can know God's truth and we can know that we're right with Him. The Word of God is the only way you can know that. In fact, how is it that a person gets faith? Do you remember this verse? Romans 10, 17. So then, faith 
comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, I've got to have faith. How does a person get real evidence-based faith that you can build a foundation on? Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Friend, that's why we have the Bible, so we can know and have confidence and trust in Almighty God. And so it's the Word of God is our source of the truth today. Think about James 1.21. James says, to Christians in the first century that they are laid aside all filthiness and wickedness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. You take the word of God, you implant that in your heart, in your life, in your mind. The Bible says it's the word of God that's able to save a person's soul. Friend, I want you to think about the power of God's Word. Look with me in 1 Peter chapter 1, and I want you to see what the Bible says about the power of God's Word. Look in 1 Peter chapter 1, and I want you to notice this verse, verse number 23. The Bible says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. You know, we hear a lot about born again Christians or born again, being born again. How's a person born again? We're born again by the Word of God, by hearing what the Word of God says and doing that. Friend, if the Word of God is able to help you be born again, should you go to any other source, any other person, any other book to be saved? In fact, it's the Bible that tells us it's all we need. Think about 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. The Bible says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Bible, all of it, all Scripture is the Word of God. And listen to this. It is able to thoroughly equip us and make us complete before God. Friend, if that's what God promises, if that's what the Bible says it can do, and we can find the evidence to back up the Bible as the Word of God, and we can, then, friend, you don't want to go to any other source, any other person, any other place to learn what to do to be saved and how to be right with God. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 kind of sums it up this way. God has given to us all by His divine power. He's given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us. Think about that passage. We have all things. What do you mean all things? For life, I can live the best life. And I have, in the words of the Bible, I have everything I need to be a godly person. Friend, if God's given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness in the Bible, there's no need to look anywhere else. In fact, we need to be very careful not to add to or take away from the Word of God. Deuteronomy 4, verse 2, God warned them that in the Old Testament. Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9, God clearly says... Uh, that if we listen to any other kind of revelation or any other kind of message that's not from God, we're going to be accursed by Almighty God. 2 John 9 says, we don't want to go beyond the doctrine of Christ. Whoever goes beyond the doctrine of Christ does not have God as his Father. In fact, in the Bible, when men taught doctrines that were the commandments of man, that's where they messed up. Matthew 15, 9, Jesus said, Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, This people honors me with their mouth, yet their, their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me. Listen now. Teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. What man says, what some alleged religious leader today says, what other people say, 
That's not what's going to judge you. That's not what's going to save you. That's not how you worship God correctly. We must only do what God says. Matthew 7, 21. Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Friend, those who are going to go to heaven are those who do the will of Almighty God. And so we ask you today to think about our authority. That authority begins with God. He is the sole source of our authority. He brought that authority down to his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus has all authority over all people everywhere. It's his words that are going to judge us. And Jesus brought that authority to us by the Holy Spirit through his apostles who wrote it down. And what we have as the word of God today and the Bible says that word of God is complete. It has everything we need for life and godliness. And it can and will save a person. And so, friend, we ask you today, have you obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Are you a New Testament Christian? Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? John 8, verse 24. Would you be willing to turn from a life of sin and in repentance turn to God? Luke 13, verse 3. Would you confess Jesus before men? Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. And to have every sin washed away, would you be immersed in water? Acts 2, verse 38. Acts 22, verse 16. If you've not done that, we encourage you to, and we hope you'll join us next time as we think more about our hope and love for Almighty God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.